What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Slipstream underscore EU, also known as the European Community Championship Division 1.2. We have got Fort Templar versus Rocket Core Pluto. It's a big game indeed as Fort Templar make their strides to get into playoffs. Will they make it or not? It is yet to be seen, but I am Mikey. And of course, as always, I'm joined by the legend that is Faded. How are you doing today, sir? Very great, Mikey. Thank you very much. And uh, yeah. It's an exciting uh, show we got here. We already had a game five overtime in our last series, that's what I saw. And now we've got uh, what we can see is definitely going to be a very, very important match because uh, Rocket Core Pluto and uh, Fort Temple Samurai is currently fighting for those playoff spots. So Rocket Core Pluto, you know, is you know basically secured and it's also in the top four, but Fort Temple Samurai are trying to fight their way up into the top four. So. This one has a lot of leverage. I mean, it's final week. You always have these kind of games, and uh, I'm very much looking forward to it because I know this one's going to be an absolute banger. Absolutely. You always have them games, don't you? At the end of the season, just before playoffs, you have them few little games that are just so spicy, and everything is on the line. Fort Templar, you know, they are a good... Uh, they're a good roster, you know? You've got um, Luna, JSMR, Hope or Soul Shot, whatever he's going by these days, mm -hmm. uh, and CJ. So that is a, a real strong roster. And Rocket Core Pluto, uh, Rocket Core Pluto, they've got Blitz, Jarry's, and Cookies, and we all know how good they can be as a team. I can't. This is going to be a very spicy game, and I think it could go either way. Yeah, absolutely, um, especially with how closely matched these two teams are in the standings. Uh, I mean, you got Rocket Core Pluto in third. They currently set a six to two record. Was four ten for Sunrise currently at four to four, and just because of the stakes that this match holds, I mean, you know, for four ten for Sunrise especially who are trying to climb up, you know, this means everything for them. You know, they lose, they're out of the playoff race. They win, and maybe they will be able to get themselves in if results go their way. So, uh, it's looking to be a very spicy matchup indeed, and we have actually all the players in Mikey and I think I, you know they've done enough waiting we had to delay the match for 10 minutes for god's sake um <laughs> and you know I'm sure they are eager to go so I think it's about time we let them kick things off absolutely division 2.1 probably one of the most important games of this season for both teams at this point Fort Templar versus Rocket Core Pluto. Who will take it and who will head to playoffs? Let's find out as we are underway in this match. Yep, here we are underway to kick off going into the corner and the first of the Sunrise is already trying to make something on attack and they are still going. It is just the siege trying to get up to the back wall. And then here comes Nipdrox diving in for this cookies. Trying to get out of the jars, but he wasn't in the best position, you know, being on the same side of the ball. I'm not going to be able to net him much as CJ puts one towards the net and two defenders. Four stop for that one. Now Blitz are going to counter attack. He puts that one into the corner where CJ does nicely read that one. As the jars on the backboard, what can be done here it is two defenders again on the ball here. As you can tell in this opening minute, the nerves um, you know, are present on both these sides, but you know, understandable it is a huge game for both these teams. As now, it will be the side of Fort Temple on attack. Here comes Nipdrox made for a double attack, but he can't land it. So CJ sends one straight into the bar. It has been back and forth, but a lot of really pointless hits not going anywhere. The nerves are definitely there. We can sense it's a big occasion for both teams at this point. As another shot comes in and just no hit from Jazz, whether he was going for a fake or not, not too sure. But again, and just another pointless whiff or another pointless hit. It seems to be his cookies. Goes up. He goes for the shot. He's striking to get it. He oh. does get that save. That is vitally important. Three minutes, 37 on the clock. And the nerves. All oh, these teams need to calm down if they want to get anything from it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, you can tell both these teams are just so jumpy. Um, you know, there's been numerous double commits. So you can tell both these teams. You know, it's the first game nerves that are uh, coming out here. As we do see the side of Rock Pro now onto the attack and now Nick Cox is trying to get this one out, make yourself a nuisance there. Now Blitzley flipping it past one. Lightning Strike has to buy some time if he can, which will do successfully. Gets it out to Nick. 
but it will be Cookies up now, going for that double. He cannot get it. As uh, now, CJ having to clue that out. His teammate was down on the job. Finds off with a bit of space. Gonna do something fancy there, but isn't going to amount to much. As Cookies sends one towards the net. Lightstrike like was so awkward in that net. And now it's obviously put on the attack. The infield comes through. Blitz like shot, though. Will it be intercepted, players? Intercepted. Cleared. Indeed, as it comes straight into the middle. What is. What was that? That was a shambles. Absolute shambolic defending. That goal absolutely should have gone in. Conceded and very much a deserved concede right there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, shambolic is a far way to put it. That was an absolute train wreck on the defence of Rockwell Pluto. I mean, you know, from that first own goal attempt and then Cookie's bumping his teammate out of the way. Like, what are you playing at? And, you know, that, we were saying it earlier, it's the nerves and it comes out there, you know, these teams having to calm down, not trust each other. But, speaking of Cookies, making up for that earlier mistake by slotting this one in. So we've got, this one two minutes now, Mikey, and things all tied up once more. Yeah, nothing Nip Trucks can do there at that point. He's going around at such a speed. Unfortunate for him, that timing a little bit off. We are tied up. They did miss, they recognized their mistake. They regained and they've got the equalizer. Like we said, it is a high pressure situation. This is a very, very important game for both teams as Cookies bounces it up once again. And to be fair to them, they're switching things up time and time again. They're trying to figure out what the other teams are gonna do because the nerves, you know, if you if you don't know what the other team's gonna do, how can you plan against that? And I think that the nerves and the fact that they're all making these slight mistakes is really coming into play. One minute 50 on the clock and it is 1-1. One, one. Who knows where this is going to go from here? Yeah, you know, this game already has, you know, brought you know, so much onto the table. Things we were not expecting. And so, really, it's difficult to say how the rest of this game will pan out because, you know, it is that first game. Both the teams still trying to fill each other out and you know, get themselves settled into the series. And it is Rocket Core that are trying to do just that. They're the ones on the attack right now as Jarvis tries to go for it with Nip Drops. Getting that block there and prevents the attacking chance. And they'd like to try to find himself with some space. He's going to try. It's an air dribble actually. He tries to send one onto the net. Cookies has a block. And Jarvis popping it out. Cookies winning outside. Well, infield to Blitz League again. Puts one towards the net. And that is a textbook passing play coming out from the Rocket Core lads. They really hit the regain. They composed themselves. They've stopped messing about. A great pass into a great shot. And there's nothing more that can be said other than that was textbook. And that is what you need to be avoiding if you are Fort Templar at this point. Yeah, indeed. You've got to be stopping those plays out. But, you know, it's great for uh, this side of Rockport because, you know, after a disaster of a start in this game, they have brought it back and they are charging back hard here as they put it in their third goal here. Whatever spawns. Coming in from Rocket Core, as you do see Cookies just put one towards the net. It was in anyway, but Jars does secure it off the line. Caught Fort Templar way out of position. And so with less than a minute left, Rocket Core seeming to be in the driver's seat for this game. They really had a train wreck and then thought, right, let's load the train back up and get it back on the track. And that is indeed what they have done thus far. 45, uh, 42 seconds on the clock even. And again, like shots are just coming in left, right, and center. You know, at this point, Fort Templar, they really don't know what to do with them. We've seen a few demo attempts. They're trying a few passing plays, but what was that? No, no power on the hits. It's just not gonna go well if you cannot connect to your teammate. That little tiny delay, it's gonna cost them. And 17 seconds on the clock. This looks like it is in the bag for Rocket Core in this first game. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you just see Rocket Core, they have all the control here, of course. It is now for Templar trying to make something of this game. That shot gonna be denied. That'll definitely be getting one done. Does the Rocket Core Pluto? You can really see the favorites in this. Taking game one. Currently three to one. And it looks to stay that way as it is dropped. And so that is a great response for Rocket Core. You know, they got caught up in the nerves. They had that um early defensive blunder, but they brought it back. Um, you know, in style, really, it was a fantastic uh, display. And in the end, they started to look really set. I was Fort Templar still haven't shaken off those norms. You can tell in the last couple minutes, their rotation looked way off. It was discombobulated, uncoordinated. So many ways you could describe it, but 
in the end, it's Rocket Core that found their footing here and they are rewarded with that first game win. Yep, yeah, first of all, I'd like to say I appreciate you picking up a dictionary because I've heard words come out of your mouth today that I've never heard before. <laughs> um, and to be honest, it got to that point there where I, I don't know what happened to Rocket Core. Somebody on that team must have said, right, let's stop messing about. Let's get our stuff together. Let's get on with it. And let's get this win. And I feel like they regrouped. They really figured out how each other were going to play. And it worked really well for them. You know, I feel they realized how much of a shambles that first goal was. And they realized how bad the nerves were. And I think they really needed that. I think they needed that concede to just reset everything. And I think they used that really, really well. And at this point, they're 1-0 up. They've got all the momentum in the world. And Fort Templar, last chance at getting to playoffs. They're going to need to step it up in game number two. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, the second game is going to be big, you know. I imagine they've taken that full minute to discuss tactics, really, and figure out how we're going to approach this next game. So let's see what they will bring to the table as we are starting off again soon. Already, it's cooking rifling one towards the net, but his follow-up shot is going to be blocked away. And so, for example, get away with the early scares now. They're on a counter-attack. Lightning Strike missing that ball there. That's not what you want. It's now Cookie trying to get out. Nip trucks. Now it's switching over to the trusty old Octane. It has to wait for CJ to make a move, but the ball will not be put towards him as Ojaras gets a fast lightning strike. It is now CJ trying to get to it. So he's got no boost in the tank. Will be Cook is now attempting to shot Nip Drops. A really nice clear over into lightning strike. And now they will have their opportunity at the attack as Blitzley gets it off the ceiling. And it's intercepted by Nip Drops, trying to develop a chance here. Here comes CJ for the follow up, but you can tell now already. Four ten points, solidifying up a bit more, finding more confidence uh, to go for these plays, and really looking more coordinated as they do manage to get the first goal of the game after that stint of pressure. Yeah, but if you remember last game, even though it was their shambolic defending, they did concede that goal, and that was what kickstarted that revolution in the game. Will we see that in this game? Because they have been doing really well in this game so far. It purely depends on how Fort Templar are going to manage this because they've got the lead, but it's not the end. Four minutes to go. The demo's coming in and a great save from Blades is able to stop that from going in. And again, it's things like that. That rotation, that perfect placement at the perfect time is what you need as a defender. And Rocket Core, they have that at this point, but they need a goal. Yeah, absolutely. And they were looking for a chance there, but Nut Shop's a lovely save to get it away and now it'll be Blitzley getting it back into Cookie to send it into the corner. Gonna try to follow it up but he can't make that read and it's now Blitzley to chip it up. Jarrah's coming in and what a shot that is! Slips it by both defenders and it will be the equaliser and you know it's just like last game that quick response coming through and in the end it's just pure speed and placement that got Jarrah's that goal. I'm not being funny. You said speed and placement. But that goal was not that fast, in my opinion. I really feel like that should have been a save there from CJ. And CJ is going to be kicking himself because of it as Jarius goes for the flip reset. Doesn't get it. And again, you see what I mean? Just three players there just completely missing the ball. That basic accuracy. I do not know what is going on with these teams. Maybe they're still nervous. Maybe they're trying to warm up. But whiffs are coming in. Mistakes are being made. And both teams are having them. And it is costing them. And they need to cut that out. Otherwise... They are, well, essentially, not going to make it to playoffs. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, you can see it once again. It is Jarvis. He has a wide open net. And there you have it. It's 2-1 already. And we'll see how that play went. It really was that one demo and then flicking it past the third defender. You can't be diving like that, really. Um, as last man, otherwise, this is going to be a free goal. And so, you know, you said it again, it looks like a good start for uh, Fort Temple again, but now that play has really broken down after what seems to be the slightest pressure for the side of Rock or Pluto. So with half the game left, it's now Fort Temple. they got to answer. They've got to sort themselves out if they want to get themselves back in it. Two minutes, 33 on the clock goes all by the shot, comes in and a great save from Nip Truck's able to get that backflip in at the perfect time. Sent straight back downfield though. Cookies, he's trying to manage it. He's trying to figure out where his teammate is. He gets the boost, taking it off the wall for now. He's going to feather his boost nicely. A great air dribble from him. He's going to go for another touch. He doesn't get it, and Niptrox is able to steal it from him for the time being. 
but again, it is just let loose. The net is wide open. Shambolic defending, and they should be ashamed of that one. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, it's just everyone was clustered there. Your second and third man just in the same position, and Lightning Strike as well being pushed up the field like that. Bit odds, and really, it was just. You know, the Fort Temple Forest is diving in too quickly. It looks so panicked on their end. And you know what? It's the same story as last game. It's an early goal for Fort Temple Samurais, and then they just rumble after RC Pro get back into it. So just two minutes left. Really, it's looking like RC Pro are once again in control here. As whilst Fort Temple do have now an attacking chance, really, RC Pro aren't breaking much of a sweat. They're having fairly easy time doing was it but is there CJ with no boost he just back for bond that and well, so three defenders were clubbed up the net for RC Blue so they'll still be able to get it away to safety. I can't be the only one who thinks the issue is boost management here. Every time they're going for an attack, every time they're trying they attempt to be in defense, they've just got no boost. Like pick up the small boosts, rotate on the boost line. You know, as much as you can. Oh, CJ's trying to go for it. He gets it up again. He's trying to be able to do anything with it. It comes down. The shot hits the crossbar. Nip trucks. He's going to send it in. A deserved goal. Great passing plays. But that boost management definitely is working on. Yeah, definitely. You know, you do make a good point. And really, the boost management wasn't bad in that situation. They made sure they had enough when they went into attack. But you do mention it. A lot of times when they're attacked, they already have very little boost because they've already expanded it, just getting there in the first place. And so it's starting to work on, but nonetheless, it was a really nicely done attack from Fort Templar. But now they're on the back foot here, having to get this out. It's Nip Trucks trying to take it in the field, but now it's Cookies into Jai's lovely pass. The shot is off target. Now here goes Blitz again. On well, the best touch, Cookies tries to cut in for it, and now it's a Fort Templar attack once again, but that touch. Being crucially missed by Lightning Strike. Now it is Jarvis trying to get it out. Over one is there CJ trying to get in. He's on his own and Cookies is just on a demo rampage here. As now it is RC Blue on the attack as we approach the final 30 seconds of this game. And now we're at Fort Temple. Another chance. Lightning Strike sent it to the backboard, but great read from Blitzley to get it away. And CJ, he has to do a lot here, but he has dunked. And it is Jarvis with his fourth goal of the game. Really the clinical striker here for this game. But that will really wrap things up here for the game two here. How many times are we going to have it? How many goals are they going to concede to a wide open net? The rotation is off point. And don't get me wrong, you know, it did turn into a demolition derby in halfway through that. But by the time that, that all has sort of fizzled out, that net should not have been wide open like that. And that's happened so many times. There's probably about three of these goals that wouldn't have gone in if there had been a defender there and if they'd have had that rotation. Unfortunately, the rotation is off point, and that is what has costed them in that game. And that results in Rocket Core Pluto taking another. Yeah, that's absolutely the case. And, you know, we talk about, how, you know, the defensive efforts here from Fort Templar or really the lack thereof. You know, that start man positioning, I mean, it's just not there at all. And I say it's about so many teams where the third man gets a little bit too impatient and just dives in for a play they should not be getting involved with in the first place. And I could get at least a couple goals of that game uh, where that was exactly the case. The third man just, you know, pushes a little bit too far out of position, dives in for a ball he should be going for, it, and really it results in a goal. So, really... For example, they've got to have that sorted out and quickly because, you know, whilst their attacks, they've been fairly solid, to be honest, um, for the most part. They've been able to generate those chances. That's not an issue. It's their defense that's been letting them down time and time again. And so they've got to be really mindful of that going into this because, you know, now they're in reverse take territory, Mikey. And, you know, if they lose this, there's no chance they're making playoffs. It's not going to happen. So game three... This is where Fort Templar have got to make the changes right here and right now, to be quite frank. Yeah, we've got to give some credit there, though. Nip Trox and, well, and Blitz both having uh, ridiculous amounts of saves in that game. So the defense is there to a certain degree. Whether or not it will come into factor in this game is another matter. This is, well, it isn't. It could be the final game of the season for them. There is no 
playoffs for Fort Templar unless they step it up and they they need to do better than that because what a goal from Cookie's absolute masterpiece. Yeah, fantastic, really. And he used, you know, used the flip that he got for the ceiling and saw the pass. And, you know, that's a great job for Cookies, right? Making use of the space he was given. But someone's got to be on that. And, you know, you see for CJ in the replay, that challenge was very late coming in from him. And, you know, going up against play like Cookies, you can't afford to let him do let him do stuff like that. When you see him coming in, you got to have someone right on it. And, you know, sometimes, I just have to say, you just got to go for it. Sometimes just go for the ball and try something because you can't let them have chances like that free but with just 30 seconds gone now it's already a go up from rc Puto, so breaking the series script already um really it's a position for example i don't want to be in on the back foot right away in this one as charles are going for another chance but cj does get there Absolute Houdini is a great save from strength there from another shot from Cookies, but again it's coming straight back in from Jerry's. And this is what we're talking about. It's that onslaught of offense. Nip trucks are out of boost there. It comes straight back into the area. Strength is there for now. How much boost has he got though? And Blitz again just gets rid of it for the time being. It is just sort of like it's just back and forth. And eventually that wall will fall down as Cookies again nearly slots it in. And they are trapped in that area. All three Rocket Core Pluto members are there. They finally got it past the halfway line. And what? I... What? What was that? Honestly, um... in the politest way possible, are we watching Division 4 at this point? Yeah, you can tell, like, the struggles are real for a side of Fort Temple because they are re they really cannot get this ball out of their own half. They can't find a solid enough clear. They're running out of boost and eventually it's going to go in. And this time it is Cookies who are making his second goal of the game. And you see Jarrah gets a pass that from CJ just diving in so quickly there. He had to flip for it, but really, the, you know, they were put under so much pressure for so long. And really, without finding a ba you know, banging clear out, a goal was inevitable in that situation. So RC Pluto... You know, they're proving to be top dog here. They've got full control of this game at the moment. And with only two minutes gone, you know, they're in a pretty comfortable position, to be honest. You know, when you consider how the series went. Yeah, in the lead in the series. <laughs> Niptrox tries something a little bit different. He does actually get it past the defender, which I'm kind of impressed about. Um, but it's just... They need to switch it up. They need to go for some demos, try something completely brand new. Because otherwise... They're just going to end up losing that opportunity. They're 2 nil down at this point. They have to regain and they have to sort their stuff out. And they have to do it now as again. Like, it's just awkwardly handed into the middle. It's things like that that they need to sort out. And I don't know whether... I, I don't know. Do, do, do these guys team together regularly? Because I know Niptrox has been on numerous teams before this. Um, so I don't know whether that's an issue or something. Something isn't clicking though. Absolutely not, and you know, I'm compelled to say that the comms have a lot to do with it because, as you can see, they have no clue what each other are doing. And really, you know, at this point, you see, like, it's like that touch was just diabolical, and really, it has laid it off to the opponent. You can't be making touches like that in your own defense, you know, you just hand it to your opponents, you need to be taking control, but with a lack of boost even having, it's such a tall task. and. Now, with them three goals down, they're completely out of it. And you know, I'm not convinced they have it in them to bring this back at this point. Because they've... I mean, I'm not even sure what to say. It looks more like a solo queue lobby and an actual team at this point. Honestly, they look worse than Sherry does. And that's saying something at the end <laughs> of the day. Again, Jarius is just going to go for it and send it in to the area. There's just nobody there. CJ is eventually there. But, like... Their rotation is off point. The communication isn't there. It is sent downfield and Blitz is forced to make a little bit of a save there. Cookies that bounces it up for the time being. CJ's there to get the block and just trapped in that corner. Cookies carrying it kind of well. He's balancing that on his car. They're taking their time. They don't need any more goals. They've got three. But Fort Templar, they've got a minute and 17 seconds to sort out any kind of comeback. The shot comes down. The net is wide open once again. And I don't know how many times we've mentioned that this season. Honestly, I think it's just time for them to find a new team at this point. Because this is diabolical. 
absolutely. And, you know, one thing I want to point out is just the big contrast in the way both these teams are playing. Because whenever, you know, in this game in particular, we saw RC Pluto in their own defense. They look really chilled out and, you know, you know calm, collected. And, you know, the rotation is very clean, I must say. And, you know, they're hardly mess hardly been messy up in that game. And, you know, you see the side of Fort Temple, it's like, it, you know, what is rotation is really the question on their side. And with 30 seconds left, Nutshock the boost isn't there. He's at least making an effort, but he's not going to get very far with the defenders in his way. And now Blitzley chipping it over the defender. It's an open net again. I mean, what? you can't play Fort Temple. They had to push up for that to make something, but... My word, I mean, you know, if there's a goal to sum up how this is and when, it may well be that one. I'm just... My brain just cannot comprehend how that <laughs> happened. I'm not being funny. But Niptrox is clearly pushing that. He made a great pass. If someone was there, that could have been a goal. Demo's coming in left, right and centre, turned straight back into the Demolition Derby. But then they push forward at the exact wrong time, which leaves the net wide open again. Honestly, everything is wrong at this point. Three seconds to go, and Fort Templar do not deserve the playoff position at this point. Simply put, Rocket Core Pluto, they've outshined, outplayed, and they just nailed that series. Yeah, that was like, you know, the start was maybe a little bit shaky for RC Pluto, but after that, they were the stars of the show. Fantastic uh, from RC Pluto. Um, you know, they did everything they had to do really to win that. And, you know, that last game was, you know, incredibly solid. You know, hard as nails, really, performance like that. And, you know what? They really deserve. They got to seven to two now. They secure that playoff spot, and honestly, you know, very well done to RC Blue. So absolutely amazing. As for Fort Templar, right now, usually <laughs> I'm you know not this critical of teams, but that <laughs> was an absolute disgrace, honestly. And you know, as one of the love the guys of the team, they're fantastic guys. Like, mate, come on, that was yeah, that was a disaster. You know, to put it simply. And, you know, as Cherry said in the Twitch chat, no trust in the team. Boost magic in the bin. You know, everything in the absolute, you know, down the toilet, really. And, it, you know, I don't think I have anything else to add, Mikey. That's all <laughs> I have to say about it. <laughs> that, that is, his rant is over, you guys. That was probably one of the worst series I have ever seen from a team of Rocket League in my life. And don't get me wrong, you know, I love Nip. Love CJ. Separate. Go your separate ways. Find different <laughs> more teammates. Because I'm not being funny. Sherry's casting was better than that game. Lord knows that's something. Oh my. But, <laughs> what? I, <laughs> I just. <laughs> it was absolutely shambolical. The entire thing. Listen, Sherry, your entire life is a failure. So don't even right now. Oh, right. It was a shambles. <laughs> they have got to get together. And it really grind. They they need to be in there 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year at this point. Or they need to go and find a different team. It was horrendous. That is all I have to say about that. But what have we got coming up, Faded? Yeah, what do we have coming up? I think we, you know that's a perfect time to move up, honestly. Right, so coming up next on the stream, we do have... Uh, we're still in Division 2.1, so we're going to see more action for this division. We have Rise Esports against Cactus Squad. And um, again, another interesting one, you know, Cat Squad, maybe in the running to potentially make playoffs. I was Rise Esports just wanted to secure seed one in it. So we're going to have to see how that one will go. So I think it's about time we hop to a break. We'll be back in, what, 20 minutes' time? And we'll be here for our next match. So don't go anywhere, everyone. We'll be right back shortly. <laughs> 